Hi, I'm Dr. Ken Henry, and this is Conservative Commentary. Well, I've harped about Democrats and their disdain for the American people, but I couldn't believe what happened in Florida following Hurricane Melton. But before we talk about how the swamp creatures rid their ugly heads, I'd like to ask you for a favor. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. It really helps us grow the channel. And go to youtube.com slash at Kenneth J. Henry and check out our other videos. A federal rel disaster relief official ordered workers to bypass the homes of Donald Trump's supporters as they surveyed damage caused by Hurricane uh, Milton in Florida. And this is according to multiple federal employees. You heard that right. This is an example of the swamp at its worst and the huge challenge the president will face when entering office in January. A FEMA supervisor told workers in a message to, quote, avoid homes advertising Trump as they canvass Lake Placid, Florida, to identify residents who could qualify for federal aid. The supervisor, Mani Washington, relayed this method, message both verbally and in a group chat used by the relief team. Government employees said that at least 20 homes with Trump signs or flags were skipped from the end of, the, uh, end of October and into November due to this guidance, which means they were not given the opportunity to qualify for FEMA assistance. It is unclear whether the same guidance was issued elsewhere in the country. The employees were part of a Depart uh, Department of Homeland Security uh, strike team that filled in and volunteered from other DHS agencies to help understaff FEMA as it dealt with a second major hurricane in the span of just a few weeks. This guidance was first issued by Washington verbally on October 22, and again in the group chat on October 27, according to one of the employees. The Trump-related instructions were deleted from the chat a few days later. Take a look at this clip from Fox and Friends Weekend, and please share your thoughts in the comments. Really wire. This is a staggering story. FEMA officials, so, you know, which should be helping everybody, directed hurricane relief workers in Florida to avoid certain homes that had Trump signs in their lawn. Okay, here's the report according to the Daily Wire. A FEMA supervisor told workers in a message to avoid homes advertising Trump as they canvass Lake Placid, Florida to identify residents who could qualify for federal aid. Internal messages viewed by the Daily Wire reveal. The supervisor... Marnie Washington relayed this message both verbally and in group chat used by the relief team. Multiple government employees told the Daily Wire. So now hurricane relief also politicized. Yeah, no question. And by the way, there was already outrage that so many FEMA funds had been raided to give to illegal immigrants. And so obviously people are saying we got to we got to take the politics out of something as essential as emergency relief. I mean, this is. Uh, insane. And by the way, the FEMA spokesperson has a statement. FEMA helps all survivors, regardless of their political preference or affiliation. And we are deeply disturbed by this employee's actions. While we believe this is an isolated incident, we've taken measures to remove the employee from their role and are investigating the matter to prevent this from happening ever again. The employee who issued this guidance had no authority and was given no direction from anyone to tell teams to avoid these homes. And we are reaching out to the people who may not, who may not, who have not been reached as a result of this incident. Will, I mean, I, I'm surprised that, I mean, you see lots of agencies getting politicized. This is one you really wouldn't expect. Well, it's not just, to, to me, it's, my focus is less on FEMA and more, I would imagine this is the case in every government agency. And what it does is show the depth of the, the cancer inside of our government. Yeah. Yeah. And that you have to root out politicization at the highest levels, for example, of the DOJ. But you have to also understand there's a bureaucracy under every one of these state departments where you have, you know, f foot soldiers who behave in the same manner as Merrick Garland. Right. And in order to really reform the bureaucracy, I actually think you are going to need, like, Elon Musk walking through the That's lobbies right. of Washington, D.C. with a sink in his hands. He's going to have to sit there with the Department of Government Efficiency and cut it down to the size you could drown it in a bathtub. Otherwise, this is where we are now. That's yeah. the challenge. That, to me, is one of the most interesting things about how this will play out. So Elon Musk fired 90 percent of Twitter, turned it into X because he had to change the culture. Yeah. It doesn't work that way with government. It just, you wish it could. 
I, I remember well, what you we did with the you department. Can't, you can, though. Pete. You can, you can. You just have to do it on a certain process, and you got to be dedicated to doing it and demonstrating how to do it. Well, the first thing you have to do and is take out the unionization <clears throat> of federal employees oh so goodness, that they're fireable. Absolutely. And I also heard that, and, and by the way, VA. But that is a massive task. We did that at the VA when, I, when we yeah. were running out at just the VA, and they refused to use it inside the VA. Yeah. So you, the government bureaucracy then fights back and says, okay, we have this tool, but we're not going to use it. And they certainly don't. I mean, it's the fight worth having. That it, is the fight to it have. It is the hey, most I important fight. Equally, and the other, the other I would be equally pessimistic just because based upon our history and the size of this thing, I think the only thing that gives me some inspiration, well, there's two things. One, the involvement of Elon Musk. I think yeah. that is yeah. incredibly big. Mm -hmm. And the second is to see some model of it in Argentina with Javier Millet. I mean, he has actually cut down government when it's hard to find an example Man, love on the it. world stage. There is actually one in Argentina. Yeah. And they have seen, by the way, a decrease in their inflation rates, like at this astounding rate, uh, just since he took office. So these things can be turned around. The other thing that he, Donald Trump said just this week, I believe, uh, he said, we're going to move some of these agencies to other states. That's a really amazing way to make sure that it's not just these really liberal D.C. suburb kind of people that are... Uh, you know, populating the bureaucracy, get it out, decentralize, make sure that these agencies are representative of the people, and they, I think that would help to get them depoliticized. It's an amazing idea. I love that.